Hey friends, it's Lindsay, back by popular demand in Graceland Cemetery again today. So I was here a couple of days ago filming for you guys, and um, I think we saw Ludwig Wolf's tomb, and I know we saw the Piper, which is um, not a particularly haunted location here, but just one that I think is cool. Um, and then I know that we also swung by the grave of Inez, or Inez Clark, however you want to pronounce it, and a few other places. And I've gotten a lot of requests for some other spots here in Graceland. So I'm certainly not going to be able to do them all. And I'm not a fantastic tour guide. If you want a really comprehensive, amazing ghost tour, you need to go to Mysterious Chicago, as long as you have um, your parent or guardian permission, because Adam Selzer, who runs that, is a local author and historian here in Chicago. He knows everything. If there's a ghost legend, he knows it. He also knows all of the cool, obscure Chicago history that um, I'm maybe not even as familiar with. So check him out if you want more. But for today, I thought I would share with you guys some cool spots here in Graceland that I didn't show you last time and we'll go into a little bit more detail. So hang tight. I'm going to walk to the first location, which is a series of mausoleums that remind me a little bit of Ludwig Wolf's tomb, which is underground. If you guys remember, it's built into the side of a hill. Well, I found another grouping of these and they're so cool. So I'm going to walk over to them now. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Guys, here we go, out of the car, hoofing it across the graveyard. It's actually really beautiful here today, although it's cold. It's like 47. All right, check this out. This is what I saw as I was driving through here, and I thought this would be really fun to explore. I don't know the background of these, so we're just going to get close and see what we notice about them. Wow, check that out. Isn't that cool? And yes, I will go, I'll climb up on the top of that in a minute. Wow, guys, I can't even see a name on this. Is that amazing or what? This is so old. It's so old that the door here, everything is all rusted. There's weeds coming out from behind it. You can see there's a bit big padlock here. Not that I'm jonesing to go in this anyway. I don't really think I would be trying to crawl through but and then they go all the way down here and we've got a little one over here it looks like it was the door has been completely sealed up in concrete Horace White there's the second one and then if we continue down this stretch we have this one Guys, these are spooky. I'm not going to lie. These are very old A&E Auto. I'm really not sure if that's a reference to the company maybe that um, produced part of this stone. I don't really think it probably has anything to do with the person buried here, but I guess I could be wrong. There's a panoramic view of what these look like out here today. All right, I think it's time to go up the side. Here we go. I want to be careful not to step on any graves, which is hard. No, I don't think that's a grave because they're everywhere here, but I've always heard that's not particularly good luck. So here, I'm just gonna climb up the side of this. Ooh, wow, okay. So the top of this, it has kind of like a crumbling little roof here. Can you guys see this? Ooh. I have a heck of a view out over the graveyard. Here, let me cross here. Go on top of one of the farthest ones. Oh, I just got up here. Wow. Okay, we're officially at the top. We're standing on top of the mausoleum. Looking out over. Quiet. Grayson Cemetery, guys, in the distance, there's a coyote. Can you see him running? He's right out there behind that bush. Here we go. Okay, keep your eyes on this opening over here, guys. There he is. Remember I told you around Ludwig Wolf's grave that there's a legend of a green-eyed demon dog? Well, there's a big old coyote. And part of me wonders if that isn't the connection. All right, friends, I'm gonna head back to my car. Hope that Mr. Coyote friend doesn't follow me. 
I'm not real keen on coyotes, I'm not gonna lie. Shady and spooky back in this section, actually, guys. They don't get over here very often. All right. All right, I'm gonna head back to the car and I'll come back with you guys in a moment from another spot. Okay, see you soon. Hey everyone, we are at our next stop today. We're really close to the pond. You see over there, there's the pond I showed you in the last video. And this section, which I love, is filled with tombs. Big ones, small ones, really elaborate ones. And I thought we would just take a look at a couple of them. Um, I don't know if there are any that we'll actually be able to see into, guys. Some mausoleums on the interior are extremely ornate. Um, we're talking stained glass and all of that. Check this one out. I, mean, I suppose that it's possible for something to be beautiful but also scary and eerie at the same time. That's kind of how I feel about these. I'm going to hop up the steps because it almost looks like we might be able to see into this one. Oh. We kind of can. I'm gonna slip my phone up into here. And just see. Oh, we see now. We see some pretty flowers and we see the actual names of the people buried in here. So this one is pretty small, actually, but it's lovely. It's also got this color you all probably recognize from Eternal Silence or Dexter Graves. This material has oxidized over the years, so it's got that eerie kind of light blue color. Okay, let's go take a look at another one. This one across the way. That's pretty amazing, no? Let's try that one. Wow. I want you to think about the fact that Graceland is over 100 acres, guys. We're right around 100 acres. And there's no lights in here and none of the videos or pictures I've ever taken has there been lights so this would be pretty spooky at night wow crane Ooh. oh guys I think we'll definitely be able to see in this one you see what I see oh my goodness check that out that is a sun filled final resting place if we look on this side you can see the names interesting and there is the pond and a little view down the neighboring streets here of the other mausoleums there are so many of them, and they are so old. Uh, I don't see a date on this one, actually. But look at the ornate carvings on the top, guys. All of those little bumps you see up there. Let me see if I can make that bigger. Those are all, like, lions, I think? With open mouths. Interesting. All right. I have one more stop to show you guys. Here is the pretty fountain before I leave this location. Be back in a jiffy. Hey guys. Okay. I'm back in the car. I'm actually just kind of in here to warm up for a minute. It's so chilly, but I thought I would take a second to fill you in on the next two graves that we're going to be seeing before I head over there. All right. So the first one is the grave of George Pullman. All right. Now this doesn't have a specific ghost legend attached to it. I'm not bringing you to this grave because, um, a bunch of people visit it for a ghostly reason, but I have kind of a bad vibe around this grave and in general, when I hear this story, so it makes me feel like it's worth visiting and stopping by. So the story is that George Pullman actually invented something called the Pullman car, which was a luxury sleeping car on a train. Okay. So a, basically a passenger car and he started the, he was an engineer. So as, as the manufacturing really ramped up for his cars, he actually developed an entire town called Pullman for his employees to live in as they worked on creating and manufacturing his vision, his cars. Well, Mr. Pullman was really, really, really good at marketing and advertising. 
and he got super famous and so did his cars, the Pullman car, because when Mr. Abraham Lincoln died, President Lincoln, he arranged to have one of his cars transport the body from, I think it was Washington to Springfield or something like that. And Mr. Pullman knew that a bunch of people would be along that route to watch Lincoln's body get transported by. And if that one of his trains was carrying the body, this would be great advertising. So he was pretty clever in a lot of different ways and he really did invent something cool. But here's where things get dicey with Mr. Pullman, okay? So apparently his town was actually, um, not all that happy, even though it was marketed to be super duper happy, okay? When times got tough, he had a habit of paying his workers less, having them work extremely long hours, but keeping his rent really high. So not everyone liked Pullman, okay? In fact, a ton of people didn't like him. And this is reflected in his grave. Let me read to you. I'm gonna grab my little papers here. I pulled this off of the internet. This is actually from Wikipedia, and guys, I don't recommend that you trust everything Wikipedia says, but in this case, I think this is pretty much spot on. So when he was, when he was buried, okay, Pullman, fearing that some of his former employees or other supporters may try to dig up his body, he had so many enemies, they were afraid someone would dig up his body and steal it, and I don't know what they thought they would do with it, but... His family arranged for his remains to be placed in a lead-lined mahogany coffin, which was then sealed inside of a block of concrete. At the cemetery, which we're going to go see this in a second, a large pit had been dug at the family plot. At its base and walls, there were 18 inches of reinforced concrete. The coffin was lowered and covered with asphalt and tar paper. More concrete was poured on top, followed by a layer of steel rails bolted together at right angles, and then another layer of concrete. The entire burial process took two days. Is that not wild to you guys? I mean, they feared that he was disliked so much that someone might dig him up, so they had to do that. I'm gonna show this to you in a minute. It's actually really big. Um, and there are some stone benches and there is a lot of concrete. So hold on, I will turn this off and I'll be back by Pullman's grave. All right guys, as promised, here is Pullman's grave. So when I was just telling you about, it is huge. <laughs> There's some really big um, burial spots here in Graceland, but this one, oof. And when they talk about all the cement and the concrete that was poured and used to create this, no joke, it is big. I have no idea where the coffin would actually be underneath of, of all of this. Um, but we do have, here is the actual marker for George Pullman. Um, so it's possible that he's actually buried around here, but just underneath all of that cement and concrete that they talked about. Um, but there's something about this story and about how much he was disliked that rubs me the wrong way and makes me feel like this is kind of a, an eerie location. It's got bad juju, you know, bad vibes. I wanted to share it. But also while I'm here, there is another grave across the street. There's some people looking at it right now, but in a moment I'll take you over there. That's just really interesting. I'll give you one more look here at Pullman's monument and then we'll walk over there in just a second actually you can see some people taking pictures over there and we'll entertain ourselves elsewhere for a second how about that i'll walk back towards this one this is a very modern looking tomb very different from the ones that we just saw a few minutes ago this one's really kind of shiny. Martin. Oh, this is very, very different. It's got a more polished exterior. I don't see any dates, so I really can't tell you. What is that? Is that an... Oh, 1887? Oh, jeez. Wow. No one's going in and out of this door, are they? Not that we would want to. Talk about bad juju. Okay, it is open. Let's check out this one. I think you pronounce this last name Shanehofen, but 
Adam Selzer, who I referenced before from Mysterious Chicago, has shown this particular tomb in detail before and he knows a lot of the history. So check out Mysterious Chicago if you're interested in this one. But whoa, isn't that cool? It's got a very Egyptian vibe. You've got a sphinx on the right here. Well, you do have an angel too, which is kind of interesting. Check out the door. This is a very vibrant blue. And I would presume that is an asp, like a snake, an Egyptian snake. Let me see if we can see in. Mm, this is gonna be hard, guys. Oh my gosh, we can. Oh goodness, that is spooky. Ooh, not gonna lie, I kinda got chills looking in this one. All right. Time to back away, Lindsay. You're scaring yourself. Let me get a look at her face. Wow. This one's, this one's scary. All right. This was the end of our tour for today, guys. Like I said, if you want more, check out Mysterious Chicago. Adam's tours of ghostly Chicago areas were actually the inspiration for the Spirits Bus and Scritch Scratch, and so I know you will love the things that he shows on his tours. Alright, see you all again next time!